Well, hello YouTube and welcome back to the Holtz Mitchell channel and part two of uh, Sugar Nuts taking it to the limit. Um, today we're prepping a piece of steel. We've got uh, a unique work holding problem here. Um, you saw the process of making the nuts for the guitar tuners, so now we're making the washers. And um, we've made them on the lathe. Here's some of the footage.
So now the problem is how do we get these to one uniform thickness? As the washers were being turned on the lathe, they opened up the face, got them nice and shiny, and um, <clears throat> The tool, of course, creates a little bit of deflection as it's uh, going through the workpiece, and uh, the work isn't uniformly thick, so we want to create a uniform thickness across the entire plane of the washer, but being how this stuff is out of uh, <coughs> stainless steel, uh, let me uh, adjust this here a little bit. So being as this is uh, stainless steel, it won't adhere to the mag chuck. So putting the washers just straight down on the mag chuck, no can do. So what we're going to do uh, right now, we're prepping a piece of steel to um, put the washers to glue them in. Uh, I've got a little um, end mill here that, uh, as you can see, has an opening here on the bottom. So we're going to drop in this end mill about one and a half millimeters or 1.4 millimeters into the surface of the steel, super glue the washers in, and then put the piece of steel back on the mag chuck and grind them nice and flat. So we have to make sure that we have a nice, uh, that the piece that we're going to put these on has parallelity. And that's critical because when we put the uh, the washers in the hole, they have to be on one plane. Now you're going to get that anyway, but the problem is you have no way of checking it and measuring it. Uh, so you know, I've got a regular old um, depth stop or a depth micrometer here um, that that I'm going to use to measure the depth of the holes that we're going to place these into. And in order to make sure that we have a nice uniform depth of hole all the way across, we have to have parallelity in our work holding piece. And so that's what we're doing here. We're getting this to where we can actually measure that. Now, I picked this up. I, this is one of the first pieces of steel that I played around with when I first bought the, uh, the mill and uh, milled it all four sides. And while it is precise, I stuck the micrometer on it and saw, uh-oh, there's uh, you know a little bit of a disparity there over one corner, so I decided to go ahead and just grind one side perfectly flat. And uh, as you can't see it from here, uh, from where you're at, but this corner over here is still, it's, it's still skipping. So we're gonna go ahead and, and uh, make sure that it's nice and parallel across the entire face. The bottom side doesn't really have to be ground. I might just give it a skim just to kind of even it up a little bit. Um, but let me bring you around here and show you what we got. As you can see, that upper left-hand corner is uh, skipped. So we got to grind that until it's perfectly flat. So let me bring you back when this step of the process is done. We'll be putting it on the uh, mill, like I said, to put the little uh, holes, dimples, or relief, whatever you want to call it. We're going to be putting uh, six washers on it, so we're going to be putting in six little holes. We're going to have to set the depth stop on the quill, and uh, could have used the table to do it as well. There's a lot of different ways to skin a cat. Don't know how yet I'm going to do it. I might use the table because that's probably going to be the more accurate way. The uh, quill stop, it works to a point, but um, on this machine, there's a, uh, <clears throat> a kick-out feature, and so you wind up uh, running into a little bit of accuracy problems on the depths when you try to use the quill purely for <clears throat> drilling depth. So you're probably going to end up <clears throat> being more accurate using the, the knee, raising and lowering the knee of the table. So anyway, uh, let me bring you back when this step of the, the job is done. Okay, we're done with the grinding, <clears throat> and uh, here we can see there's a little bit of skip on the back side. I did do two passes on the back side, and uh, still got a little corner up here, but that's not going to interfere with our uh, uh, operation here at all. There's some light scratches on the surface where I had to remove the workpiece from the uh, mag chuck, and uh, this magnetic chuck 
sometimes stays a little too magnetic for too long after you shut it off and so it's hard to get a work piece off of it without really scratching it up too bad but uh, this isn't going to interfere with uh, this. I think what we'll do here is uh, use the quill stop. Um, the depth of the hole really isn't all that critical. Um, we want about 1.3 millimeters depth. Uh, what is critical is the uh, consistency of depth. So we're going to drill or you know mill in six holes or six pockets uh, to hold the washers in. And of course, they're like I said before, they're going to be glued in place with super glue, and uh, then ground to one uniform precision uh, thickness. Uh, this is for a guitar for Susan Gardner over in, in the UK, and um, it may not seem like it as, as such, but uh, musical instruments do command a, a fairly high degree of precision, so we want to try and make th these parts at least uh, as accurate as we can within reason uh, so that the instrument performs in a satisfactory manner. So uh, that's the reason we're going to the length and depth uh, that we are in this project to make sure that from our end of it, uh, Susan gets a good product and uh, the end customer, whoever that may be, it might even be Susan that ends up playing that guitar later on, um, that at least from that point of it, there won't be any problems arising due to inconsistencies in the finished uh, parts that go into it. So, um, you know, I've played guitar in the past myself and, you know, there is noticeable differences uh, when you pick up a cheap instrument versus a nice versus a nice one or shall we say expensive one uh, where the parts in there have a high degree of precision and, and, and accuracy. So that's what we're trying to duplicate here. We want Susan to walk away uh, happy and so we're going to do the best we can on this one. So anyway, let me uh, swing the camera around here. We'll put this uh, in the vise and get it going. Okay, our me measurement instrument for today is going to be the depth micrometer. Uh, we could use a uh, regular um, set of calipers with the stinger on there. Um, these do work in a pinch for um, you know projects that aren't terribly terribly accurate. If they're accurate within uh, these are accurate. These are Minutoyos. I don't particularly care for them. Um, it's an old bias from trade school uh, when I was apprenticing. They were considered, you know, uh, low-end measurement tools. They are good uh, for what we're doing here with them. They'd be plenty good enough. But again, uh, we're going to use the depth micrometer so that way we have a higher degree of accuracy. For the average home gamer, a pair of these calipers, Mitotoyos, would be <laughs> more than plenty good enough. Um, personally, I prefer Mauser. I have two pairs of them at home, and. Uh, you know, they're hard to beat, although these come fairly close and they do do a satisfactory job. So anyway, let's put in our uh, our workpiece, bring the table out. Okay, make sure our parallels are good and clean. Place the piece in the work or the in the vise. Give them a good cinch. Now, as you notice, the parallels are loose in here, so we're going to have to give it a tap. And this is critical because the work has to be seated snugly. As you can see, it just slipped out back there. Now we're going to have to retighten on the vise. Okay, it's still not going to tighten up, so let's turn it around. Maybe we can get it. There might be some inconsistencies with the side of it here, and so um, it's milled, but it's not ground. So let's see if we can get this to tighten up. Not quite, but almost. There we go. Come on, get in. This dirty pig don't want to try it again. Sometimes you have to loosen the vise and retighten it. There we go. Now we got it tightened both, both front and back. 
the parallels are nice and snug and that's what you want so let's uh, raise our table here I'll uh, pause the camera here for a little bit and uh, we'll raise the all this good stuff up and uh, go from there so now with the uh, drill bit in here the drill bit the uh, mill in the collet I set on the depth stop here right at zero so now we're going to go ahead and, and run our quill down and put full pressure on it hold it and uh, now we're going to move the work into position and raise the table until we just barely touch so now we can position our workpiece somewhere else we're going to go three holes and uh, three holes parallel so now how we get our um, workpiece up to we're going to use this paper towel here actually we should just use a piece of regular paper got an old invoice here this is a little thinner paper and so raise it up until it stops moving okay back it off just ever so slightly and try to get it in there to where the paper just almost stops moving I'm raising the table real slow because I don't want to run it up in there all of a sudden it's hard to control it here we go now we got some resistance on the paper and now we're good so we've got the thickness of our paper this is what we're going to take into account so let's measure that real quick nah. So we have 0 0.0, 0 so we got seven hundredths of a millimeter thickness. So that's what we have to add to our or subtract. We can do it however we want to, but anyway, we want 1.3 millimeters depth. So let me zoom in here to the depth stop on the quill. As you can see we've got a the zero mark here so we're going to rotate this until we hit 1.3. We have those seven hundredths that are still there. Got to loosen that up. I won't want to turn. So now we're at one, two, and three. So that's how deep our mill is going to go into the workpiece and so we're going to do this six times and uh, then we can stick our washers in so let's back this off a little bit so now we've set zero on our dials everywhere so that way um, this is our zero point so we'll then go over here to make a parallel row and then just kind of divvy this up we've got Oh, about 117 millimeters here to play with. So then we'll space these about oh 30 millimeters apart will be plenty, and uh, about 20 or 30 over this way. I think we can go, or yeah, 30 over this way. So yeah, 30 by 30, a 30 by 30 spacing, 
Now the reason we're using this uh, thicker block instead of a thinner one is uh, for heat absorption. This is, is going to act as a heat sink for the heat that is generated in the grinding process in the washers so that it transfers into this and doesn't allow the super glue to uh, lose its grip. So let's give it a squirt of Wiener Schleider and go to town. Okay, we're at the full depth. So there was our first pocket. And now we'll move the table up 30 millimeters. Yeah. This dial here is all backed off. Let me get this set to zero here real quick. Otherwise, I'll be in your camera or in your review, and so I don't want to do that. Oops, gotta go the other way. So, one, six. So now we're at 30 millimeters again. Another drop of Wiener Slider, and so this is going to be a rinse and repeat until we're all through. I'll bring you back when all the uh, divots are done. Here we've got our finished block. Let me there we go. So there's still going to be a little bit of a burr. Yep. And so we got to take that burr off before we can actually measure in the uh, the depth of this. So let me get the uh, file here. So we're going to take the burr off of here. So take our little Diamond tool and okay. On the centers of these, you can see where there's been material pushed up into the center, and so it's got to be flattened down pretty good. We're getting a little bit of a grinding marks on the outside, but that's all right. That shows us we were getting a consistent surface all the way across. It's a consistent surface. So now we're ready to take a real measurement and see how much variation there is in the holes. Let me zoom this out just a wee bit. So, yes, our pin will fit in here. Got to run it out just ever so slightly, and no it won't, that dirty biatch won't fit in there, so we're going to have to resort to our calipers anyway. Wasn't in the plan. I was hoping to demonstrate the depth micrometer. So now we got to make sure that across the bottom of the caliper it's nice and flush and, and uh, parallel because you don't, in order to get an accurate measurement, you gotta have 100% uh, contact, and that's kinda hard to do with these. That's one of the reasons I don't like using the calipers for doing this kind of measurement. So, we have 1.1 on that hole. One point one five on that hole. One 
1.15 It's getting kind of tricky to measure up close to the machine here. Five. So this is the only inconsistent hole. Let's measure it again, just for shits and grins. It could be we just got some uh, some bad mojo here. And... Yep, it's 1.15. So we have consistency all through the holes here. Now it's time to grab our washers and uh, glue them in. Should have 14 millimeters on the diameter. Washer should be a nice snug fit. So let's grab those washers and uh, give them a try. So now we've got our washer saw here. Now we're going to need some brake cleaner here for these holes because the uh, Beaner slider in these holes. So we're going to go ahead and clean these out real good. The super glue won't stick if there's any kind of oil or something in the hole, so we're going to clean it all off real good. To remove these, all we'd have to do is heat them up or uh, use acetone. We'll probably use acetone to remove them and then clean them up. So. There we go. Now we got a perfectly clean hole. And we've got to do the same thing for the washers. Otherwise, this will all be for naught. So now we've got this. Now, oops. You do have a little bit of open time with super glue. You don't want too much in there, but then on the other hand, you don't want too little. Got some on my fingers already. And so it's So here you can see our finished surface before we put it in the grinder. Now you can see here's a burr and there are some inconsistency. There's a slight taper to some of these washers and so we want to get them nice and flat as we can. I'm still having trouble with this one here uh, with the glue nut setting up right. So I'm going to have to wait a few more minutes but I thought I'd show you why we're grinding these. This one here is about the best one of them all. I don't think it was the first either, but um, now we just, now they're sticking out a little proud, which is just fine. Uh, we don't really care if they're, if they're proud or not. Um, as a matter of fact, it's probably better because in that way all we're, we're grinding is the washers themselves. And so we're going to start off with really, really light cuts just to take off these high spots here in the centers and then uh, make them nice and plain across there. So we're only going to be taking off maybe 
you know, one hundredths or two or three hundredths of a millimeter, maybe up to a tenth, but that's going to be about the maximum. So let's uh, bring you back when uh, we put this on the mag chuck and get ready to go. Okay, now we got all uh, mounted up. Now we're going to, this uh, grinder has a, a bearing problem, and so we're, we'll end up with a uh, scallop mark or a scalloped finish on the on the workpiece which isn't really all that attractive uh, every time you turn this machine off and then restart it it gives you a scallop finish so we have to uh, to uh, joint the head the uh, grinding surface on it which would do in it anyway um, and so we're going to do that and then uh, start lowering this on to the work That's all equalized now. Engage the feed. Now this is a hydraulic machine and it's been sitting. It's also very cold outside, although there's a heater in here that takes a while for it to warm up. So now we're dropping the head down onto the work. Be real careful so that the glue doesn't heat up and release. I can barely hear it touching, so I'm just taking it in a few hundreds at a time in order not to pull the washers loose out of the holes. Here's our finished product. Before I take it off the mag check, you can see there's nice consistent discoloration or coloration of the the washers in the work in the, in the holding piece here. So now the uh, big trick is to get them out of there. You can do this either with a hairdryer or with acetone. In this case, I think I'm going to use probably the hairdryer and then acetone to clean off the remaining. Uh, glue remnants off the washers um, but other than that this project is pretty much done so let's get that all squared away and then we'll bring you back when we're ready to do our our shipment assembly uh, for this little project well YouTube finally got a wrap on all this on this project got the uh, washers all stuck in or the nuts and washers <coughs> threaded into a piece of wood so that they're ready for shipment. Just going to take them home and uh, take the, there's a slight burr on there from the grinding so that's got to come off yet, but uh, other than that this is a finished project. So these are going to get shipped off to the recipient in uh, the UK. That would be Susan Gardner. For those of you who don't uh, subscribe to her channel, uh, go by, by all means go and check it out. Um, Susan's a woodworker. She builds guitars. Um, very knowledgeable. Very uh, very good woodworker, uh, one of the few people in, in YouTube that I've encountered uh, that actually knows what they're doing. So by all means, go check her out, uh, you know, some of her projects. And uh, I'm sure there's going to be some takeaway lessons for, you know, other woodworkers as well um, in, uh, in her jig building and stuff, for example. Uh, some really cool stuff. But uh, anyway, uh, these are done. Stainless steel, the consistency, I, I did stop and measure them. There's still a little bit of uh, super glue remnant on there that I just can't quite get off. Uh, so there's a there was a little inconsistency in the measurement, but that is due to those remnants of glue. Uh, across the board, we've got 1.41 1 1 millimeters thickness, uh, which is what we were looking for. The 
end dimension of the thickness of the washer wasn't really that isn't that critical. We're looking for flatness so that the nut when it exerts pressure onto the the washer that the load is spread out over a, a even uh, surface so that uh, there's no torquing or twisting of the the, the washer into the wood and, and uh, creating uh, because this is for an instrument it's for guitar and so you don't want to create a buzz uh, by having uh, uneven contact in the surface of, of, of the of the nuts and, and the washers of course and then of course you want consistency in the thickness so that the harmonics does, don't change between uh, the individual uh, nuts and, uh, and washers or the tuners, the tuner necks and so forth. <clears throat> Consistency is, is really uh, the key here is more so than the dimension, the actual dimension of the washers. But yes, doodly doodly do. The takeaway lesson from this of course is that stainless steel is not magnetic and so how do you hold a, uh, a washer or a piece of stainless you know on a mag chuck without uh, you know without it being magnetic enough to, to pick up. Now there's some uh, species of, uh, lack, for lack of a better term, of stainless steels that are slightly magnetic and will hold on a chuck, but this stuff here was one of those rare exceptions and so we had to get creative as to how to hold this. And so with the depth stop and so forth, uh, normally I would have uh, just raised the table, but uh, it would have been you know a lot of a lot of cranking and so forth and so I thought well we'll try it this way with this with the uh, with the depth stop on the quill uh, if we can get any kind of accuracy at it it ended up working out good so we went with that. Well YouTubers that's a wrap for the Sugar Nuts Taking It to the Limit series uh, I do apologize to Susan for having to take so long, but again, the work holding issue, the, the washers ended up being a bigger pain in the butt than the nuts. The nuts were just straightforward lathe work, boom, 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 knocked it out. Those were done, you know, rip, snort, and bang. The washers themselves were cut and done, you know, turned real close, you know, in real uh, short order of time. It was just trying to get the finishing touches on them to get the consistent thickness uh, on them that turned up being the, the real challenge. So, <clears throat> hope you guys enjoyed what you got to see uh, in this. Uh, again, it was held in place with super glue. Used up, uh, ended up using the uh, the acetylene torch to heat it up. The the hair dryer wasn't quite enough. Uh, one of the things you got to watch out for, and uh, this is just a little safety warning, when you do heat this stuff up, this super glue, um, <clears throat> it did create some, some funky gases that, uh, I don't know if are poisonous or not, I'm sure they are, the cyanoacrylate, acrylate, or whatever you want to call that stuff, uh, may not be the safest thing to breathe in, but uh, anyway, I tried to avoid the fumes as much as I could and did. And uh, but just to be a heads up, there are fumes that do uh, are generated when you heat this stuff up. So if you have any thoughts, comments, critiques, suggestions, put them down in the doobly doo down below. Uh, hope you guys come back for more fun and adventure with the Holtz Mission Channel, and we'll hope to see you guys again soon.